What's up basketball fans? Welcome back with me Rocky Padilla. We're on another episode of Three Point Contest. Next to me, streetball legend Pat The Rock. How you doing Pat? I'm good man. Happy to be in Indonesia. Having a good time. Uh, this is your second time, right? Did you get a chance to go around Jakarta this time? Now this is actually my fourth time. Oh, fourth time? Yeah. 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 I didn't know that. Yeah, so I've been here a couple times, man. I love the city and the environment. Uh, we'll talk about uh, yourself first. How did you, uh, when did you fall in love with street ball? I fell in love with street ball when I first heard the crowd go crazy. Mm -hmm. when I did a move and I said, I love that feeling. So I just kept, you know, trying to impress the crowd every time I stepped on the court. Do you have a uh, favorite basketball moment, maybe it's during your street ball career? Uh, my favorite moment was probably be when I kicked the ball off the glass one time and my teammate Air up there caught it in the game. The crowd just went crazy. You know, ever since then, you know, um, that move really helped put me on the map. What do you think about the state of street ball nowadays? You know, because we know early 2000s it was crazy, right? We got everybody have a mixtape, but nowadays uh, we don't really see that much hype about it. But what do you think about the state of street ball nowadays? I think street ball has actually transitioned into the NBA. Okay. If you look at a lot of the guys in the NBA, the flash and the flair that they have, they grew up watching the N1 street ball show. And, you know, just to see, you know, a lot of those guys implement some fancy moves okay. in the game. You know, just goes to show the NBA, the the M1 legends that started it. You know, they really made an impact on basketball. And I know you were very close with the Los Angeles Lakers point guard Quinn Cook. How did you get close with him? Uh, yeah, I've been training, mentoring Quinn since he was a little kid. Um, you know, he's one of the hardest workers, and you know, it just goes to show where he at is where he's at today. And uh, you want to talk about street ball? He's got some handles too. I know. I've seen that during the uh, his Duke days. is crazy too. Yeah. But you play with a lot of celebrities. Last time I saw you were with Chris Brown at Stable Center. Mm -hmm. Who do you think is the best celebrity basketball player? Hands down, Chris Brown. Yeah, Chris Brown can play, man. Like, he's very talented, not just as a musician, but, you know, I, I think if he wasn't doing music, he could, he could definitely hoop. He can play. Did you ever dream to go to the NBA back then? Yeah, that was definitely one of my goals, but, you know, I never realized you could actually travel the world and play basketball. You know, if I made it to the NBA, I might not be able to come to places like Indonesia. So, I'm very grateful for the opportunities that I've had. So, you're a trainer now. Congratulations on the opening of your new place now. Anything is possible. So, what do you find in uh, training? You know, you probably find a lot of joys in it. What do you feel about training, uh, being a trainer, uh, basketball trainer? Yeah, so, you know, basketball is like full circle, man. I mean, all the places I've been able to experience globally, you know, I can take that back home and teach the kids, you know, so they don't have to make the same mistakes that I made. They, they can have that advantage. They can know what a kid in China is doing to work on his shot or what a kid in Africa is doing to build up his endurance. And now you package that all into the skills and development, you know, they're going to they're gonna be really good, man. Uh, talking, about, talking about teachings, you're in Indonesia right now training the top 20 LA street ball players. What do you want to teach these guys? The most important thing is I want to teach them is the mindset. Mm -hmm. You know, that basketball is 100% mental. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't matter where you're from. You know, we all put on our shoes the same way. Wake up in the morning, you got to be hungry. You got to want it, to want it, you gotta want it more than the next person. So just trying to teach them that, you know, if they want to make it to the NBA or if they want to do something big with basketball, anything's possible. What was your first impressions of, of these players? Uh, when I first saw them, you know, I, I think the confidence is what I noticed the f first, that the confidence okay. wasn't there. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of these guys can play, but they didn't really realize how good that, you know, they could be. And what I wanted to do in the training sessions was pull that out of them. So by, you know, the 10th day, the last day that I'm leaving, mm -hmm. now they're more confident. They have their swagger okay. to feel like they can compete. Okay, now let's do the fun part. Three-point shots. Yeah. I've seen you shoot, though, this past Weeks, like, you yeah. can't miss. <laughs> so it's stand shots, losers got to run suicide. You pick the spot, where do you want to shoot from? Man, it don't matter. It don't I matter. I got that range. Uh, we'll, we'll go from top of the key, right. and I'll shoot first because I will set the standard. Okay. Usually it's low standard. <laughs> so uh, let's go to the top of the key. Let's go. go.
at four, so I gotta run my suicide. So let's my do this. Whistle, my whistle. <laughs> Come on, get on the line. Let's go.